Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. This episode, we're going to talk about an interesting short story collection that you recommended to me called Cold War Hot. Oh, yes. Cold War Hot, which is another book in the anthology series that Peter Saras has done, who we really like. Yeah. And this one is all about Cold War, alternate history Cold War scenarios. And there's some really good ones in here, some really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Cold War, huge scope. So many things to talk about. And mm -hmm. I think they do a pretty good job of covering a lot of ground with it. Uh, you know, there's only two Vietnam stories in this whole thing, which yeah. I was surprised by. Yes, and I was initially surprised by that, too. But they're... I like that there's two different ones because they attack it from two completely different angles. That's right. The very first one, uh, geez, do you remember the name of it's it? It's Vietnam, the war that no one remembers. Oh, right, right, The war right. of Vietnam, the war that we forgot or something like that. But the point is in that one is that the U.S. takes a very specific counterinsurgency approach that's not, as the author saw, very heavy-handed the way that we did it in real life and that we work with, they do the strategic hamlets program where they work really hard on giving a lot of civilian aid and trying to sort of wean people off of the Viet Cong and using force in a very judicial way. Yeah, yeah, which honestly is a, that that's an interesting approach. It's not even like a military approach. It's, it's more like a land yeah. redistribution yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, it's basically following, it's as if the U.S. implemented the, the program that the Brits used in Malaya during the 1950s that successfully defeated a communist insurgency. Right. But it's very well done, um, and it takes forever. It takes like a dozen years to work. But it has the U.S. winning in Vietnam, sort of this slow path without using very heavy-handed stuff. But it's a good it's a good shot. It's an interesting way of winning, and it's a very reasonable way of winning. Like the U.S. could have implemented this. And right. M maybe a slightly less reasonable way of winning. We have our second story <laughs> to go boldly among them. Yeah, and uh, that's a good one. Okay, so to go boldly among them basically has in 1970 the U.S. launches an invasion of North Vietnam. Right. And that basically the author talks about how so much of the North Vietnamese military was down in Cambodia, Laos, and South Vietnam. So. This is less plausible in our opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, probably the thing that kind of sticks in my craw a little bit more than anything else is the fact that they authorize mass arrest of like media members and <laughs> peace activists, which... I, uh, hmm, huh, hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it just seems like it's sort of the fly with a sledgehammer sort of approach. Right, right. You know, not, not to say that I don't want America to have won Vietnam. I mean, obviously I do. Yeah. But it's just, it, this feels more like it's it's more about the outcome than it is about the means. Yeah. And the means matter. The I think means do matter. Yeah. yeah. And it just seems a little bit crazy to think in 1970 that the U.S. was going to launch a full-scale invasion. And Vietnam just, North, the North Vietnamese government just collapses very quickly yeah, in this. immediately. And like, I, all, all it takes yeah. is for Bull Simmons to have found a couple of, of documents written by the Soviets and East Germans and then go to the president and say, Let, let's just do it. Let's just invade them. Let's just make it happen. And the president's like, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. No, um, I mean, it's it, it just sort of, it, it, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm, I wouldn't be against a, a a scenario in which the U.S. invades North Vietnam, like to is it not in reality, but just to see to just sort of war game it out in a book like this. But I feel like the resistance would be a lot tougher. He and, he, he kind of gives it to America, and that's okay, and that's okay how he wants to write it. But that yeah. doesn't mean it's exempt from criticism. Yeah, it just it just seems a little less a plausible way of winning. It's just it's hard to have seen knowing what we know about the Vietnam War, like just saying that well that we'll just if we just only had like fought. If we'd only just sent more troops, if only we'd really, if we just doubled the amount of artillery shells we fired, we would have right. won. And, and I don't know if that's the best approach to a nuanced issue, like could we have even won Vietnam? Plus it would have been, it's difficult to, to judge how the Chinese would have reacted to this sort of thing. I mean, yeah. obviously we ended up having a pretty good relationship with China just afterwards, but maybe part of that is, is, is factored in by the fact that we didn't have a puppet state right next to them in Vietnam. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. As opposed to reality where, you know, they went to war with Vietnam just a couple of years after the war ended. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah. Well, talking about China, we should move on and talk about there's another scenario that's really fascinating. In it oh, man. Where yeah. China, the Sino-Soviet confrontations in 1968 go nuclear, basically. The Fraternal War. The Fraternal War by Forrest Lindsay. Really Th This one really caught me off guard. Yeah. Because I'll let you talk I, about I, it starts off with this, this Soviet analyst who's looked at the way that the United States has has responded to different foreign policy situations. And since the United States pulls out of Vietnam almost immediately, he says, well, 
if we go to war with China and try to take territory away from them, the United States would not get involved. And for that reason, we should totally just attack China. And I guess everyone just immediately agrees with it because they go for it. They, they, uh, they attack China and it quickly escalates into a full on nuclear war. It's crazy. It's and, insane. Yeah. And in chemical weapons and conventional, just crazy, unbelievable death toll. Right. And they, although it simulates pretty accurately, I guess, in a sense, what a war like that would look like, which is just how absolutely devastating that is. Yes. Like they talk about how they, they nuke troop positions and then they have to march through this irradiated landscape and it's just horrible. And the, the chemical weapons, they talk about how it has the consistency of motor oil and kills a man just with a just the slightest touch of it God, just they, they talk about how the fallout from these nukes kill i think it's like hundreds of millions of people worldwide which is cancer. what it really would really yeah. would do and i think it's sort of like this doomsday scenario it's, it's is what's mapped out i think the ending is a, i like it i like the ending it's funny but i mean it's maybe a little silly that henry kissinger gets called in and just solves everything <laughs> <laughs> this war that is killed you untold know, numbers of people untold numbers of people is just hashed out and, and goes back to the status quo yeah. very very quickly yeah yeah and then talking about interesting crazy scenarios there's one about quebec in here that's oh, fascinating oh i'll let man. max go into it oh wow like this this was interesting because as as the author of this story points out canada is the only western country that dealt with a cell-based terrorist organization before it got out of control. In this case, they're talking about the FLQ, the uh, the uh, Quebec Liberation Front. Yeah, yeah. And this story is savage. Absolutely just yeah. brutal. It's basically like a guerrilla war breaking out in Quebec. Right. In 1968. It's all precipitated by, I, th I think it was Charles de Gaulle showing up and yeah, saying, yeah. Vive la Quebec. I think he did that in real life, if I recall correctly. But the point is, is that in this, like the Canadian situation just gets out of control. Mm -hmm. And there's like militias occupying like Quebec City and Montreal. Yes. And the, the, the Canadians can't drive them out. And it causes like NATO to like disperse. And the U.S. has to send like ground troops. Yes. in to drive them out of Montreal and it's just a really what I like is an unconventional scenario because I was expecting half this stuff was going to be Vietnam mm -hmm. you know or like a, a ground war in in Central Europe in 1985 or something like that and not 1968 and American troops are helicoptering into yes. Montreal to do battle with and, and like, they talk Quebec they talk, separatists they talk about like Native American and Sikh battalions getting mobilized and, and going up against them and like that's how it ends and like the footnotes imply there's like this terrible dystopian future they talk about the ministry of truth and stuff like that which was yeah. it was interesting yeah no it's a it, it's a very interesting sort of perspective and story um and then talking about interesting perspectives and stories the last story in the collection is called red lightning and it's basically about the premises is, is that the u.s figures how they're going to defeat a soviet invasion of west germany is just dropping a whole bunch of vodka on the advancing <laughs> russians and i mean he says at the beginning like this is supposed to be like more of a humorous take on it this is peter saras actually wrote this one in addition to editing the whole anthology and it's it's a bit goofy i must say but <laughs> yeah. i mean i appreciate the, the you know the attempt at it and like the soviets do invade and the u.s just just drops from airplanes just millions of liquor bottles and then everything just grinds to a halt in one day <laughs> um but uh, it's fascinating. And then there's also really, there's so a couple other things we're just going to mention briefly, I guess. There's um, an Afghanistan one. I know you like. Oh, you yeah. Like this. I, this I thought this interesting... was an interesting one because what they, I think the biggest point of divergence is the fact that. So Jimmy Carter is able to hash out a deal with the Iranians and get the hostages released before the 1980 election against mm -hmm. Reagan. And yep. he ends up winning re-election. Yes. And because of this, he ends up not getting involved in Afghanistan not starting a proxy war with the Soviets there and the Soviets end up taking over all of it and then starting a lot of problems between Pakistan and India. Yeah. Pakistan and that and just India. ballooning out of control. Yeah. And it's sort of an interesting, and that one is more of a polit. It looks more the diplomatic side, uh, which is really interesting than the military side. Like a lot of these do, which I like that approach. For right. Sure. Right. Yeah. Which was very interesting to me. Also, in addition to that, there's, there's two different stories about naval engagements between the United States and the Soviet Union off the coast of Israel. Yeah. In the Medi Eastern Mediterranean between the, is it the sixth fleet, the U S sixth fleet. And I, uh, so the Soviet fleet, the Black Sea. I think, there's I think it's fifth, Sixth Fleet versus Fifth Fleet. 
Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah I, the Soviet name for it, I forget. But there's one that was in, set in 1967 at the time of the Six Day War, and then there's another one that's set during the time of the Yom Kippur War in 1973, and um, that one is crazy because there's like actually like a boarding action that occurs. Like, <laughs> like the right. Americans have to ram a Soviet ship, and they all pick up like meat cleavers and like Jack Daniels bottles and. <laughs> Climb over and fight the Soviets. I mean, it's crazy, and I think the ending to it, Max, is oh, oh, yeah. oh man, uh, this this was probably my favorite part of the whole anthology is when he's talking about the reality of the situation. The author at the yeah. end of each of these things, they talk about the reality. Wade Dudley, who you know, big props to him. I also really liked his story in um, the Pearl Harbor, Rising Sun, Victorious. Victorious yeah, uh, yeah, but, he's he's one of our, he's one of our favorites here. I think, <laughs> but he 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 makes this note. Where he says, you know, a lot of people will probably criticize this story for not ending in a nuclear war. Well, I have two things to say to that. One, I don't think that would have happened. Nobody in the United States or the USSR in high positions wanted a nuclear war between the two of them. And number two, it would have been a really bad way to end this story. So if you really want a nuclear war, you can simulate it by taking this book and tossing it into an open flame to simulate <laughs> the destruction. Like, oh, man, <laughs> wow. that's really good. Yeah. But it was no very well done, and overall, I think we just I like this because it's the most of the, the the anthology series are on World War II topics, which believe me, I'm perfectly fine with. I love World War II alternate histories; are fantastic. There's so much to work with, but I like that they did the Cold War stuff, and oh, they yeah. do some interesting stuff. And the fact that they have this stuff on Quebec and all that that matters. It's cool that they're doing something different, and it's not all just one topic. Because you know, a lot of people take it for granted now. People mm -hmm. our age who didn't grow up with the Soviet Union in our lives. Like the Cold War is this strange time of history where, where yeah. you know, you don't really – when you're growing up, you don't really know any of the details. But the Cold War affected everything. Yeah, and the crazy thing is is that we have this view on it, yet there's so many people living that remember it as – you know, who grew up in it, remembered it, were participants in it. Henry Kissinger is, is still alive. I mean, stuff like that. I mean, these are – the key players, Mikhail Gorbachev, you know? Goodness. <laughs> like it's just the point is is that, that – the Cold War is very, it's very interesting to see like sort of crack and, and cracking back the shell of the Cold War to have some like some hot war scenarios doesn't also require nuclear war, which a lot of them seem to do. In, in fact, you know? most of them have a world that's more or less the same as the one we have now. I mean, a, f a few of them yeah. indulge mm -hmm. in, you know, I believe the Korean War one mentions like a small nuclear engagement with the Chinese in the uh, in the footnotes, but it's very Something small. like that. Or, very well, small. in the Red Lightning one, they talk about how there's a new czar in Russia, like an <laughs> actual like czar. Right. But, yeah. but the point is, is that it, it does, I think it does a good job of keeping it cabined and talking about to realistic divergences you know so. my, my something i'm a little disappointed by no mention of africa in this yeah in this thing i would have been interested to see them talk about angola a little bit yeah, or and, 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 i don't know there's the congo yeah you know they mention egypt a little bit in one of the yeah. israeli stories but mm -hmm. but it's not it's not a big one yeah yeah so that would be interesting to talk about that you know u.s troops going to angola that could be interesting talk about so. gaddafi talk about ethiopia you know talk about you know mm -hmm. Haile selassie the derg something uh, like that yeah yeah uh, but overall, good job. We like the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Very good job. I was very pleased with the short story collection. Yeah, yeah. Very, very well done. Another another, another good one from Peter Saras. So I think that's about it. Yeah. So this is Matt signing off. This is Max signing off. Have a good day, guys.